Senator Paul, with all due respect, you are enti entirely and completely incorrect that the NIH has not ever and does not now fund gain-of-function research in the Wuhan Institute. Since the outbreak of the COVID pandemic, Dr. Anthony Fauci has been the face of the government's response to the outbreak. Fauci appears on corporate media outlets as the go-to science advisor to the media on an almost daily basis. This sycophantic reverence from the mainstream media is troubling, not only for how often Fauci's been wrong or been forced to reverse himself, but also for his demonstrated penchant for lying. Fauci has historically demonstrated his preference for funding dangerous gain-of-function experiments, repeatedly claiming that the potential rewards outweigh the risks, which is somewhat odd when contrasted with his repeated denials about funding gain-of-function experiments at the Wuhan lab. But that's not the only thing that Fauci has lied about. Fauci has lied about lockdown measures, vaccine efficacy, therapeutics, the type of work that he funded at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, and perhaps most importantly, Fauci lied about and covered up the origins of the virus. Hi everyone, and welcome to Truth Over News with Jeff Carlson and Hans Manka. 81-year-old Anthony Fauci has been head of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases since 1984. That itself is an extraordinary feat of longevity that should make anyone question whether he's been there for so long because he's an indispensable public health official, or if instead he created a personal empire leveraging his position as the custodian of a large share of global medical research funds. Fauci's organization receives more than $50 billion in annual funding and controls the purse strings for a vast portion of global research activity, directly controlling the career outcomes of virologists and epidemiologists all over the world. In 2014, Fauci's NIAID awarded a $3.7 million grant to EcoHealth Alliance, headed by Peter Daszak. As Francis Collins, the then director of the National Institutes of Health, very belatedly admitted, a portion of that money went directly to the Wuhan Institute of Virology. When President Trump terminated Daszak's grant in April of 2020, Fauci simply bypassed Trump and gave Daszak a new grant of $7.5 million, twice as much as the original grant. And Christian Anderson, a scientist who privately told Fauci that he was 60 to 70% sure the virus came from a laboratory, but publicly propagandized the natural origin narrative, has received at least an additional 10 million dollars just since the start of the pandemic. Another Fauci-funded virologist who's been pushing Fauci's natural origin narrative, Robert Gary, has received at least six million dollars since the start of the pandemic. There are many others. Indeed, all virologists know that their career trajectory is directly tied to complying with Fauci's wishes. But it's not just the billions in taxpayer money that Fauci was controlling and doling out within the virology community. It's what was done with that money and the ongoing lack of oversight, which is far more troubling. In 2011, Fauci proclaimed that funding dangerous gain-of-function experiments was a risk worth taking. Then, in 2012, Ron Fouchier, a Dutch virologist whom Fauci would later rely on to cover up the origins of the COVID pandemic, used Fauci's grant money to make the H5N1 virus airborne. Kawayoka and Fouché constructed variants of H5N1 avian influenza in order to identify which genetic mutations might alter the transmissibility of the virus. In their studies, they employed a standard influenza animal model, namely the ferret. This slide shows the basic design of the experiments in which the virus was modified 
to allow for aerosol transmission from one ferret to another. Why Fauci thought it was a good idea to make a virus that did not pose a risk to humans into a virus that did pose a great risk to humans is unknown. COVID-19 has shown us all how much worse a virus is once it transmits through aerosols. Perhaps it was just hubris. Perhaps it was something more. But the genie was out of the bottle and things would only get worse from there. In 2014, Fauci started funding the Wuhan Institute of Virology in China, the world's prime lab experimenting on bat viruses and also the world's largest repository of such viruses. But it wasn't simply the funding. It was the prestige and reputational bolstering that came with it. For China and the Wuhan lab, the science community recognitions that came with NIAID funding far exceeded the funding itself. Unsurprisingly, going forward, the Wuhan lab made sure to mention the NIAID in its publications and projects. Only a year later, in 2015, the Wuhan lab's director, Shi Zhang Li, was afforded the opportunity to collaborate with the so-called godfather of gain-of-function experiments, Ralph Barrick of the University of North Carolina. That collaboration, funded by Fauci's NIH, led to the transfer of important tools and know-how, including humanized mice, from the United States to China. The collaboration also led to a highly controversial study in which Barrick and Xi created chimeric viruses that were virulent in humans, leading to immediate warnings from the scientific community that the only impact of this work is the creation, in a lab, of a new non-natural risk. Not only did Fauci fail to heed these warnings, he made matters exponentially worse by explicitly allowing the Wuhan lab to use taxpayer funds to continue to conduct dangerous gain-of-function experiments on bat viruses in communist-controlled China. This decision came despite the Obama's administration's ban on such experiments. When his own China representative, Chen Ping, issued several warnings about the Wuhan lab, including the fact that she had been denied access and that the lab was engaged in secretive nanotechnology experiments, Fauci again did nothing. The funding simply continued. A major red flag arose in 2018 when EcoHealth, the organization through whom Fauci was funding the Wuhan lab, applied for U.S. government funds to manipulate bat viruses by inserting a furin cleavage site, the precise feature that distinguishes COVID-19 from all other SARS-related coronaviruses. That work was to be carried out at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Soon after, in 2019, EcoHealth failed to submit a routine annual report on its activities at the Wuhan lab. That report would have potentially covered the work in the 2018 proposal to insert a furin cleavage site. Inexplicably, Fauci's organization gave EcoHealth a pass, and the money kept flowing, despite the missing report. As any junior researcher can testify, it is unheard of that additional research money is released when legally required reports are missing. That just does not happen.